morning, everybody. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Welcome to my kitchen. I am frying up some kale along with my potatoes. I haven't eaten breakfast yet. Um, my, my day starts out with uh, my devotions and a walk and um, my quality time with God, and then I eat. So... But I wanted to spend some time with you today, too, so I thought I would fry up my breakfast while I'm chatting with you guys. Good morning, Chad. Good morning, those of you that are out there joining me. I have a question for you. Some of you uh, were joining me last week when I talked about the importance of slowing down and um, getting quiet time. I'd love to know how many of you actually embarked on that this week and got yourself some more quiet time and some slow time. Good morning, Tammy. It's really, really, really a vital part of our lives and really something that centers us as well as getting outside. I'll tell you what, I woke up, I haven't been feeling good the last couple days. Um, I've been trying to nurture my body again um, due to mold exposure, so my body hurts to like the slightest touch and my joints and everything were just really giving me trouble and it tends to get it can get you down and um, with everything we've got going on in our lives it just was one of those things that I didn't need to happen at the time but you know things happen for a reason and I went for a walk this morning and it just felt so good and uh, really good morning Chad and uh, Really, guys, the outdoors can play such a role in rejuvenating us, and I look forward to sharing the outdoors with you, I hope, next week and the following week. i got to see and take my camera down to the, um, and see how far my internet will reach, and if I can get into the woods and actually set up that I could do some survival training with you guys as far as um, fire starting and, and different tools and different things, so... I'm going to gear up for that, and next week I'm going to try to be live, but I don't know what time, because next uh, Wednesday is the start of our elk and deer season here in northern Idaho, and we are down to four meals with meat. I've got plenty of food, but we have enough meat for four more meals, and my guys are big meat eaters, so we are gearing up for a successful day of hunting. There's four of us, and... We each have elk and deer tags, and uh, may possibly get a bear tag. Seen a lot of bear scat on our walk. So, hoping to refill the freezer and to uh, get out there. I just, I love being out hunting. I love uh, seeing the mornings and the woods come, come alive when you're sitting out there. That's just uh, something that's just very awing to me. So, talk about the um, slow and quiet times. That's a big one for me. Being in the tree stand or in a blind is really huge, huge opportunity for that. But I thought we would talk today about, um, you know, if you don't have a dream, so many of us are still searching for what our purpose is and our dream, and we may be stuck in, you know, uncertain, certain, just uncertainties, you know, with finances, um, marriages, uh, just so many things, jobs, our jobs play a role, you know, and it just can be, it can be a real downer for many people, and, you know, you're searching for your dream, and you're not sure where to find it, or what it is, how many of you um, can relate to, you know, being in uncertain times in your life, and, you know, you, you weren't really sure which direction to go in, you may be doing that now, um, and, one of the things I've really found is that we're constantly changing. We're constantly evolving. And um, I don't, my mind's spinning. I've got a lot of thoughts going on right here. So bear with me. Plus, I'm stirring my food. I love kale. Nicely um, fried up kale in the morning. Um, I found out I found a lot of things in my soul searching this year I've really understood that we are evolving we are constantly evolving our dreams change 
our direction changes. Sometimes what we start out with as a dream evolves into something different. And um, the book I mentioned last week, Chasing the Lion or Chase the Lion, the link is down below in the description. I encourage you guys, you know, if, if finances is a, are a problem, go to the library. Um, get the book, get the audio book. I am listening to that book for the second time now. I listened to it last week and I am listening to it again. What an empowering and amazing, ama it's just an amazing, eye-opening, really inspiring book. And... You know, we've been going through such an incredibly rough year. Um, the last three have been really rough, but this one has really taken the cake. Above and beyond my medical things, just the circumstances we are living right now have been so hard and so tiring, and so much has been shifting, and so much is inconsistent, and, you know, I couldn't imagine where I would be today if it wasn't for um, my, my faith in God, for starters, and... Um, just continuing to persevere. Chad says, oh, he says, working, just listening. Please pray for me. I smashed my hand last night in a job. It might be broken. Oh, wow. Yes, and, and God bless you too. And yes, we are definitely praying for you. Sorry to hear that, Chad. Hang in there. And uh, I know that Tammy will be praying. I know she's on here. And um, I'll add you to my... Uh, prayer list and, and also shoot you out in our, our uh, to our prayer warriors. All right, I got my kale cooked up. I'm going to turn that off. It's kind of distracting. I told you, there's Tammy praying for you. It does sound very painful, doesn't it, Tammy? Um, that's not good, especially since with what you do, you need both your hands at all times. So hopefully we will pray that it's not broken and that whatever is going on is quickly healed um, get some arnica arnica is amazing for healing it keeps it, um, the inflammation down and it will eliminate swelling and bruising and will help it to heal I use that on the mountain man every time he ends up um, with an injury of sorts it's amazing amazing stuff so is uh, magnesium oil is another good one Chad that'll help uh, relax the muscles so that it can um, heal um, just some thoughts. I am going to, I think, relocate real quick here and sit at my table with my nice backdrop. I'll tell you what, my house is so cozy. Uh, we are really gearing up for winter. Things have really changed. We had a 30 degree morning and uh, got heavy, heavy rains yesterday, which is good. It's been so dry here and uh, I've got lots of things to burn. I'm cleaning out the shed and uh, just about finished with that and so so much going on but I want to encourage you guys to keep learning while you're seeking your dream because the more you learn the more um, equipped you are for your dreams the more equipped you are for what may be ahead and also the more educated you will be um, on things and it's successful people are the ones who never stop learning and I just I love delving into new things I love learning new things and when our dreams are in the midst of change or we're in uncertain times if we can focus our brain on the important things and stop thinking about our struggles and also helping other people through the process. Um, you know, when we focus on others and serving others, that also distracts you from your own struggles. And that has been a huge part of my healing process and my perseverance process through this year. And I just want to encourage you guys to, to do the same because it's easy to get down in our circumstances. It's easy to get down when we don't know what our focus should be, um, when we're in a job that we don't like, and uh, we're in a, in a relationship that's, that's hard, or when we're going through financial troubles. No matter what it is, um, it's hard. And I would be lying to you if I told you that I wear a smile every day and that everything is kosher every day, because it's not. Um, I've been very real with you guys and very transparent because I, I feel that God is using me to be able to heal others through their circumstances and that may be going through similar things at the same time. 
Tammy says she loves to learn new things as well. Yes, I just, I'm enthralled at learning. I love learning. Good morning, Teresa. And, and, um, it can be easy too to overwhelm yourself with learning. When you create yourself a list of things you want to learn and then you try to do them all at one time, I don't advise that. I advise you to do one thing at a time and really focus on it and learn it and move on to the next thing. Um, when you get too, it's just like having an iPhone in front of you. I know many of you can relate. We talked about getting rid of the equipment and, and focusing on quiet time. When you have a phone in your hand and you don't know what to do, you start just digging for something to do. I know you do because I do it sometimes. I've caught myself. That's why I've eliminated my, my usage or um, lessened my usage of my iPhones because I want to like be intelligent and not just be staring at a machine and also uh, you know, being unable to focus. So do that. Make yourself a nice list of the things you'd like to learn. And if you're in the middle of a spot and you don't know what, where your dream is taking you or what dream you're even supposed to focus on, keep learning. Keep learning new things and keep focusing on serving other people and um, focus on God too. Guys, I honestly, like I said, I don't know where I would be if my focus was anywhere else because this year has been very difficult. Um, the mountain man and I have gone into some really hard valleys um, together. I mean, it has just been, you know, and I, I have to believe that there is some sort of depression involved here too because we are working really hard to change our circumstances and no matter how hard we work, we're not able. So I do feel that God is using our circumstances to help others and, and I believe that as we progress, um, God will uh, reveal his miracles and his blessings um, to you all as well because we have seen them he is still blessing us greatly he is still providing and um, it's just really amazing so don't lose hope don't lose faith and when you can't see your dreams don't don't be just dis distraught um, just refocus and I really truly believe that you guys need to read the, and listen to or listen to the book chase the lion I have I read a lot and I have been reading a lot over the last couple weeks that's one of my favorite things to do and um, I've been learning a lot of different things and um, in learning from one person I'm directed to another book so it's kind of been pretty cool but um, of all the books I've ever read I think Chase the Lion is one of the most empowering and most inspiring books I've ever read but hence why I'm reading it or listening to it a second time and the guys have been listening to it too so just lots to be learned and and lots to be shared I love hearing from you guys too if there's things that you guys have done through your hard times or when things were uncertain to help get you out of your spots I would love for you to share them because I know that I'm not alone and I know that um, you guys have gone through things too because um, that's just the way life is. We were going to have ups and downs, but one of the really amazing things too that I have done, and I've done this many times in my life, but I'm not very good at being consistent with this because I get pulled away. Good morning, Deanna. Glad to have you joining me. Hope you guys are doing good in Pennsylvania. I have, this is something I made, so all the more reason for me to want to keep using it. Um, this is one of the things I learned how to do, one of the fun projects I did. But this is my gratitude journal. And I am determined to create new habits for myself. That's why I've been taking a reprieve from social media and just uh, staying in the quiet. And in staying in the quiet, I have been spending more time in my Bible. I have been incorporating my gratitude journal into my day where I write about the previous day and I am determined to keep doing that I've I've had many and I've always stopped but we can create new habits and one of the things that was really neat to me not only in Chase the Lion but in a couple other books that I've read and also a uh, um, the boss of the swamp on YouTube um, his is really impressive to me he goes back into his journals and has boxes and boxes of his journals and he reads from his journals from back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s and it's just really neat to hear his journals and to hear what he has to share and it's also you know neat for him to go back you know through memory lane 
And I wish I would have been better at doing that because it's really just, um, for me, I just get, you know, I'm just really excited to hear people share that. And then Chase the Lion, the fellow, did the same thing. The pastor and author um, would refer to his journals and look back on his progress. And I just think it's something that's really good for that. But additionally, when we focus on gratitude, it changes the way we view life. And I think that that's really important because it's very easy to get stuck in our woe is me's and, and in our bad spots. And I share that because yesterday was really hard for me. I spent the entire day catering to my health. And it took till about three o'clock till I finally settled in and was like, you know, this is, this is what my day needed to be. I needed to do this for me. I needed to do this so that I will be better tomorrow. But I have so many things to do, I wasn't, I wasn't okay with it. And there's a lot of people out there that are listening that have chronic illnesses, that have terminal illnesses. And I know that you can relate to me because you, we, we, in nature, want to keep going and we want to keep doing. And sometimes we just can't. And this, this journey we have been on, it's, it would be really easy to get stuck in the woe is me and to be um, set back by our our um, way of handling things and that's why I feel it's so important that we put things in place that uh, we can focus on pulling ourselves out of low places when they happen because it's going to happen and um, I've mentioned it before in other videos you know having a good friend that you can rely on having a good friend that will help pull you out of your low places and and so forth so I just it's, it's really amazing. One of the things that was said in the book um, by the author is if you don't have a dream, keep learning while you're waiting. Get into God's word and God's dream will get into you. And that same statement applies to um, God getting into us and, and strengthening us. And our relationship with him, the more we have a relationship with him, the better our lives will be, um, the better better at peace we will be. And I can share that because we were on vacation for a week, like I mentioned last week, and then my in-laws had visited here for a week, and last week was just kind of crazy. And the whole year I had spent every morning with God. I read from my Bible, I did my devotions, I, I had a routine, and that routine got thrown off. Not that it was you know, horrible. Um, but I was determined to get that back on track. Um, I was still doing devotions with the mountain man on our vacation, but it just wasn't the same to me. That quality time I spend with God makes such an impact on my life. And I didn't realize how much until I didn't have it. So I just want to encourage those of you that are seeking God to really seek him wholeheartedly. Good morning. Oh, hello girl. I'm glad to see you joining me, Ashley. But the more you seek God, the more fulfilled we will feel. You know, we're all seeking joy. We're seeking our dreams. We're seeking happiness. Some of us might be seeking money. You know, we're seeking all kinds of things. But the real peace comes when you have that relationship and you know that his word is true. His word is golden. He will never change his promises to us. And honestly, guys, like I said, I don't know where I would be this year, and I don't know where the mountain man would be this year if it wasn't for the fact that we have that ability to pull into him and to talk to him. Um, it's, it's just an amazing thing when you really start and have that solid foundation with him and then it gets thrown off some way or another. Uh, that's when you realize how powerful and how important it is to you. So, in addition to last week's challenge of learning to slow down and get in the quiet, I also want to challenge you to spend more time with God and to talk to him. I talk to God as though he is my best friend and he is right there, just like I'm talking to this screen because I know you guys are there. Um, it's just really powerful, though. Um, I have to admit that for a while my, my prayer life was kind of uh, jaded because I was really numb. Uh, prior to our vacation, uh, both the mountain man and I were just so, so tired and so wore out. And not that we aren't now, but we got our, our focus back to where it needed to be, and that is on God. And, and, and sometimes when you're going through these crazy times, 
you don't know how to pray. You get so numb in your situation that you don't know how to pray. But you just need to ask for his strength and his guidance and, and to thank him for his promises. In our gratitude, in writing in our journals, that shows us that he's still present in our lives all the time. He's constantly blessing us. And um, one of the things that's really important is also sharing that gratitude back to him and thanking him for all that he's doing. Um, it really makes a difference. So I just wanted to encourage you guys that regardless where you're at in your journey and what you may have going on, that your focus needs to be, if you are, if you are seeking God, you want to put your focus on God. If you are looking for your dreams and you don't know what to seek anymore, your, your dreams are shifting, um, staying in it and just keeping active and constantly learning is really important. I want to say something today too. Although we are going through one of the hardest times in our lives right now, I have no regrets and neither does the mountain man. Um, God's, God brought us here. It was very clear that our Finding this property was divine intervention. Our getting here was divine intervention. And building here was div through divine intervention. So there's purpose in us being here. And, you know, when we sat down and we really talked about it, you know, we have learned so much over the last eight years. I mean, we knew a lot coming into this, but we had the desire to learn so much more. So when you look back and while you're waiting for things to transition and waiting for things to happen and you keep learning, look at how far you progressed. That's, that's the real thing is when you can look back and see how far you've come. And that also is how the journal can play a really big role in that because Trust me, guys, you're not going to remember everything. <laughs> One of the things that the illness affected was my brain and my memory, and I'm very grateful that I keep really good notes of things and that I use Evernote, as Chad knows. Chad will vouch. Chad uses Evernote as faithfully as I do. I'm sure he's catching up to my almost 4,000 notes in there. But keeping track of things and writing things down and to, even things to just jog our memory, but to look back at our progress, we have no regrets. This, it, our situation is what it is, and we know that we've given it everything that we have. Um, but it's all perspective. It's all how you look at life. It's all how you look at your circumstances, and it's all what you use to refocus your circumstances to bring yourself out of these places. Good morning, Shannon. Glad to have you joining me. You know... It's real easy, like I said, to get down and to get into weird places. But when we have a, a, a habit created, basically, of what we focus or what we lean to and what we go to to pull ourselves out of places or what we um, focus our energies on, if we're focusing our energies on the negative, we're going to stay in the negative and we're going to manifest negativity and more negativity. But when you are able to catch yourself in those places, have things in place to pull yourself back around and have things in place that you know that you can do that will make your life better. Morning, Holly. Such as creating a journal, you know, playing with leather, making soap. I have um, soap that I'm going to be making. I have hot sauce that needs to be jarred and canned. Um, it's getting really hot by the sounds of things. I have not tried this batch yet. Um, the guys have been using it, and as it's being used and as it sits, it keeps getting hotter. I have stuff to do. And, you know, when you have those things to focus on and you focus on them and you get inspired and you have fun doing them, it removes your mind from that place of negativity. And it's really important, guys, because like I said, negativity breeds negativity. So when you're around someone else that's negative, it can be really a downer. But when you're in that spot yourself and that's what your mind is thinking about all the time, you will breed more negativity in your life and you will manifest it. And I know that sounds crazy, but it is very, very true. And that is why it's so important for me to get out on my walks and to do my gratitude journal, to spend time with God and to keep my focus on the things that need to get done. And then to sometimes give myself grace and show myself mercy in taking days like yesterday where I needed to cater to my body and do all kinds of different treatments and just rest. So I just want to encourage you guys. I want to give you guys empowering and encouraging words because 
this is what I'm living and I know that I'm not alone. And I know that what I am leaning on is rock solid and it has been such a blessing to me. Like I said, I, I can't imagine my life without God in it. I can't imagine where we would be. I know, I, I really have to say that if we didn't have God in our lives, I don't think we would, I would be on here chatting with you. I don't think that we would be in the same circumstances. Um, so I just want to empower you. And one of the things that I've always been sharing in the description below is uh, number 624 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. And something else. I like to end with a prayer and I also like to end this sometimes with a devotional. And today's this week's has been really good. It's talking about the use of the Holy Spirit in our lives. I just thought I'd read this quick to you. I need to put my big eyes on. I can't see for anything. All right. John 14, 16. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. There are many benefits to receiving the Holy Spirit. In the New Testament, Jesus told his disciples, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. The Greek source of the word comforter is, I'm probably going to um, butcher this, parakletos, which means one who comes alongside you to strengthen, encourage, and advise you. Think about it. When you feel discouraged, confused, and powerless, you have access to a wise, compassionate, competent helper who will show up to support you and supply you with what you need. So instead of struggling to go it alone, learn to lean on him, trust his power, and ask him to do his mighty work in you. Here's another Holy Spirit blessing. Paul tells us the Holy Spirit will tell you where to go and what to do. Then you won't always be doing the things your evil nature wants you to do. The battle of the spirit versus the flesh is constant, and however well intended, our fleshly nature can never be subdued by human thinking. That just produces defeat and discouragement. And another advantage of the indwelling spirit is that you qualify for a spirit-directed lifestyle. The Bible says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Praying and taking your best guess isn't God's way. The Holy Spirit's guidance, not your guesswork, should direct your lifestyle. I just, I just really feel um, that we are all so blessed to have the Holy Spirit in us, guiding us and directing us. And I'm sure many of you can relate to the nudges of the Holy Spirit. Um, when you go to do something that you know is wrong and all of a sudden you feel called out on it, that's the Holy Spirit. And um, the Holy Spirit is also there to put the right book in your path, to put the right person in your path, to have that person at the grocery store smile extra big at you when you're having a bad day or vice versa. You know, um, it's just a really good feeling to me to know that we have somebody that can lead us and guide us and direct us and, and also be there, uh, you know, when we are having discouraging days. So if you don't have a dream, keep learning. I really like that. I really like that a lot. And put things in place and create new habits. We've been talking about living with intention all year and you can create new habits. I have created new habits all year long and it has been amazing. One of which was my time with God every morning and not allowing that to be hijacked because that is one of my non-negotiables is my time with God. And although I allowed it to get hijacked for my vacation and the following week. Those are the only two weeks out of this year so far that my time has been hijacked. And that was just because that was also new to us. <laughs> that was the first vacation in eight years. So, and it was a real blessing to us. So, so guys, when you get that nudge to do something, um, and, and, You feel empowered to do something, but you're fearful. You need to read that book, Chase the Lion. Um, so many of us are fearful of embracing things and fearful of change, fearful of creating new habits or unknown, unsure how. It's just making them happen. It's just constantly, every day, making an effort to make that happen. And when you derail, get back on track. 
but we have so many fears that keep us from creating good habits and removing bad habits and we also have that fear that keeps us from embracing dreams and sometimes we are being nudged by the Holy Spirit constantly to keep doing something and we keep it, pushing it aside because our fear is stronger than our courage and sometimes those opportunities become missed opportunities and those are dreams that you were supposed to embrace. So when you have that nudging and it keeps coming back, there's a reason. So all of this kind of meshes together today and hopefully I wasn't just rambling on and on and it made sense to you guys. But Chad, uh, we will be praying for you and I will be checking in on you to see how you're doing. I'm so sorry that happened to you. Um, but hang in there and keep me posted on how you're doing. And guys, thank you for taking time out of your day. Next week, I hope to be videoing and showing you one of the either deer or elk that we have harvested for our freezer. As I stated earlier, we have four meals of meat left in our freezer and next Wednesday starts our, our season. So we will be hopefully uh, doing a lot of butchering and a lot of canning and preserving and uh, getting our meat up on the shelf and in the freezer in the next two weeks. So uh, we will keep you posted on that. And again, I'm not on social media very heavily right now, but you can count on me being on Facebook Live. If I won't make it Wednesday because of our hunting, I will be on Thursday morning at 1030. So keep that in mind. But guys, I really appreciate you joining me. And um, what is your feedback? I would love to get some feedback. How many of you took some quiet time last week? And how many of you can relate to a gratitude journal? or um, the importance of delving into some time with God. That has been really powerful for our family. Um, the mountain boy got away to camp this year, and when he was there, he realized how much he had slipped away from his quality time since he had moved out into his camper and how much that was missing in his life. So it's interesting how um, the Holy Spirit reaches us and what he uses to reach us and what he uses to rekindle our relationship. Prayers for a successful hunting season for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I imagine you guys will be getting involved in that as well. Do you guys hunt as well, Tammy? But just stay strong. Stay strong and, and keep your focus on the positive things. Uh, listen to the Holy Spirit. And just be sure to take quality time for yourselves and focus on the gratitude because honestly, guys, those are the things that are really keeping us grounded is every night being thankful for so much that's happened through our day and, and recording it and just our time, our time with God is just so well spent and is never, you know, we don't rush it because there's been so much gain from it. But I'm going to quick say a prayer for you guys. And for us, and dear Jesus, I just thank you for this beautiful, beautiful day. It is just gorgeous fall weather. Thank you for the rain that has blessed uh, this dry, dry area. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you've done and are going to do in our lives. Thank you for the constant blessings. Thank you for the blessing of all these beautiful people that join me every week and share their thoughts and communicate and, and, and share their quality time with me. And Lord, I just ask that you wrap your loving hands around all of them, give them peace and strength and comfort in whatever it is that they're going through and in whatever their needs may be. Please be with Chad and Lord, just help his hand to heal quickly and allow it to not be broken and uh, just give him some uh, quality downtime that he can rest his hands so that it is ready and able and for his, the hard work that he does with his hands. And Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in our lives, for blessing us with all the little uh, Holy Spirit divine interventions in our days, and for your healing hand and your love and mercies on us. And Lord, I just ask that you keep everyone safe till next week, and we ask this in your holy and very precious name. Amen. Okay, son-in-law and hubby. Our, our hunters good well we'll be praying for you guys too uh, that's what we live off of is whatever we uh, harvest each year so it's important to us to get the meat on our table and and from the, from the wild so guys thank you so much for joining me I hope I wasn't rambling too much today um, I just I have been struggling and I wanted to share that I wanted to share my heart with you guys and um, 
just encourage you because I know that I am very strong-willed in being positive. I am very strong-willed in wanting to keep my life positive, uh, focus on the gratitude. So when I don't, I know that other people are having problems too. And maybe other people aren't as strong as I am. And that's why I feel that it's so important to, for me to be transparent. You know, um, we, we are living the dream. This is a beautiful lifestyle. Um, it's a rough year. It's been a rough three years. Um, but focus is important and, and, and making people understand that we are no less human than you are and that we struggle too. And, and I just want you guys to realize that. And I want you guys to see, you know, if I'm not sharing the truth, I feel that you won't be gaining the truth and you won't be gaining, um, from what I'm sharing. So that's why I share from the heart and I share, you know, our experiences very transparently this year because I think that it's going to really help benefit others. So anyway, guys, I'm going to go eat my kale and my potatoes that I was cooking up and do the dishes and get me some more outside time because it is a gorgeous sunny day. So guys, take care. I look forward to seeing you Wednesday, but if we are out in the woods hunting and I don't show up, I will see you Thursday at 1030, okay? So take care, uh, love you all, and God bless.